Thank you, Chairman Day. And before I begin my report, I'd like to uh, again welcome our new trustees to their first board meeting. Trustees Krinsk and, and Kames, your insight and unique life experiences will undoubtedly uh, enrich this board, as will your dedication to help the California State University fulfill its mission to benefit all of the students in California uh, as in the nation. So again, welcome to the board. You know, one week ago, I, I had the privilege of addressing a, a group of educational business and community leaders from California's Central Valley. Uh, the topic was one we grapple with across the, the Cal State University, across educational segments and across the state. Namely, how do we address capacity constraints to drive that social mobility that uh, the chair just spoke about to drive social mobility through increased access and completion in higher education. I left the Fresno State uh, campus uh, where the event was held, my alma mater, one of them, with a profound sense of optimism. It wasn't as if we had crafted a solution yet to this complex and pernicious problem over the course of our morning together, but rather my source of optimism was its willingness and the enthusiasm of the Central Valley's educational leaders and civic leaders to set aside self-interest to work together to elevate the entire region. The Valley's leaders, including our presidents, truly want what's best for the students and families they serve, whether the best fit for a particular student might be at a CSU, at a UC, an independent university or a community college. They acknowledge and understand the very real economic challenges this region faces, but more important, they understand the remarkable talents and unrelenting determination mm -hmm. of the Central Valley's students, so many of whom are not place bound, but rather place committed, who simply want to earn a high quality education near their homes, <clears throat> to discover their passions and to gain the knowledge and skills to achieve their dreams, and ultimately to elevate their families and the communities that they deeply love. Indeed, this sort of authentic cooperation and collaboration across segments and among stakeholders is essential to developing innovative solutions to education's most vexing issues, whether on a regional, statewide, or national level. That is why I'm so pleased and, uh, and honored to have been appointed to Governor Newsom's recently announced Council for Post-Secondary Education. I believe the Council shows great promise to be a vital and effective consultative resource for the governor on issues related to access, affordability, student success and completion, and California's future uh, economic prosperity. For years, the public education sector have demonstrated a willingness to work together for the benefit of all California students, whether it's developing transfer pathways from the state's community colleges, advocating for more robust financial aid, or addressing students' basic needs. On this point, I want to also quickly acknowledge the extraordinary contributions of the University of California President Janet Napolitano, who, as I'm sure most of you are aware, announced last week that she will be resigning from her position at the end of the academic year. Her intellect, her vision, and her willingness to engage with all stakeholders to expand educational opportunities for all Californians will be greatly missed. The Governor's Council that Janet and I and others sit on provides a new coordinating body for these sorts of long-standing collaborations and adds important voices representing mm -hmm. economic development, finance, and labor, as well as the independent colleges and universities. This is significant. This is a significant in integration. Higher education is an ecosystem, and now we'll all have key components of the ecosystem gathered around one table. With all the stakeholders present, the discussions will perhaps become more complicated, but ultimately they will be richer and more valuable, leading to more innovative and more comprehensive and more actionable solutions. I do sense a new energy, one that will keep the council from becoming mired in the age old and ineffectual debate over the role of higher education, whether it's to promote an educated citizenry or to provide our students with the knowledge and skills they need for professional success. Of course, it's both. See how quickly that debate can be resolved? We want our students to be civically engaged, indeed productive members of their communities, and we want them to have a good job, 
to be nimble and versatile and creative problem solvers to adapt to the changing future of work to create a different future of work, to be scientifically and financially literate and culturally competent, to have all of the skills and personal qualities that set them on a course for lifelong achievement. I'm confident that members of the council are of like mind in this regard, and I'm pleased that we have system and institutional leaders on the council. Ideas that show the potential for moving the needle can be taken directly to our respective governance structures for consideration and appropriate action not to override systems of shared governance or the authority of this board, of course, but to prevent potential solutions from becoming bogged down in bureaucracy. So I think it's the right construct to advise the governor on bold and innovative ideas that serve current and future students, as well as the state. And importantly, I think California has the right governor in place to contribute to act uh, on such bold ideas. As you all know, Governor Newsom and the legislature have made a strong investment in higher education and the CSU in this year's budget, and he has a clear and vital vision for the future of public higher education in California. I am pleased that the governor will be outlining that vision for us as part of the CSU's Graduation Initiative 2025 Symposium that will be held October 17th and 18th in Sacramento. The governor's participation in the symposium is another concrete example of his commitment to the CSU, and I encourage you to attend. In addition to the governor's remarks, the symposium provides a remarkably important opportunity to reflect on our most significant student success initiative, to identify what's working and what's not, and where adjustments need to be made. Uh, to gather with educational leaders from the CSU and beyond to share best practices, promising practices, and to think deeply about the innovative ways we can help all of our students, regardless of income or background, of course, gender, race, ethnicity, or status, all of our students to achieve their academic, personal, and professional goals. I hope to see you there. And before I conclude, I wish to acknowledge Leroy Marista, president of Cal State East Bay, who announced his intention to retire in June of 2020. The way I see it, Leroy, this gives us nine months to change your mind. <laughs> Kidding aside, we're going to miss Leroy's constant professionalism, his institutional knowledge, and his kind, positive spirit. We will properly thank him later, and we look forward to his wise counsel and leadership until then. Chairman Day, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chancellor White.